Okay, first question to welcome, uh, welcome everyone at this talk. And the first question to ask uh, to you is, uh, uh, how much of you, just make a simple survey, wants to deliver this talk in English, does not understand Polish, because I expected such. Uh, please raise your hands. Okay, at least we have more than zero, so definitely this solves the whole problem. This will be delivered in English, and I do not see any, any issue uh, with that. So, okay, that's fine. Please take your seats uh, <laughs> and, welcome to the, and welcome to my talk. Uh, in this talk, we will, to we will tell something about IntelliJ debugger tips and tricks as it, as it is presented on this slide. And just as a form of somehow int introducing myself and, the, and the, before everyone take, the, take, take their seats, I will just tell a few words about me, and then we will go directly to agenda. This talk will, does not contain a lot of slides. It's about 13, because usually during my talks, I let my code speak uh, in, in the name of me, so the slides only somehow obscure the real content that I want to show. But nevertheless, I had to prepare a, a few of just to somehow attract your attention to, during the talk. Okay. Let's go from. Let's start from this one. Let's let's briefly go through it. So my name is Martin Crost. I work as a hybrid person, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, for both uh, Inetum and JCommerce because we have merged recently. So uh, I was working since seven years in JCommerce, but now we merged into Inetum. So we shouldn't be somehow surprised why the slides are being Inetum Inetum pre type presented. And this is my work. Uh, from Monday to Friday as a technical leader and Java developer. And on Saturdays and Sundays, I'm somehow changing my skin, and I am acting as an IT technical trainer in Sages in Warsaw, in Poland. I'm usually conducting the trainings from reactive programming and uh, uh, Java rudimentary things, like also debugging and so on, uh, and also about the modern Java uh, stuff that is presented by me. OK, if you want to contact me, you can use directly these two emails that I have presented here, and also so if you want to look into my repository in which I'm keeping the stuff uh, usually for used for my trainings, you can either go to this GitHub link or scan this QR code, which I somehow eager to you to do for that. This uh, code we are talking, we will be using in the presentation will be also public. Pre pub published in this repository, but after a few days because it currently is more or less the private one. OK. After this short but necessary part, let's go directly to the debugging part and talk about this agenda I want to present to you. And this may be a little mystery, because uh, these uh, points may seem not to be completely related with any form of programming, debugging, and so on. But I will try to explain it better. So we will start from something like, how to fly to Mars, make a very complicated fl fl flight plan uh, to go to the other planet. And this is somehow connected with the uh, question how to set up the application to be able to debug it per correctly or to make a complex setup before starting the app at, at all. Then, after that, we will go to something like no littering, so how to somehow output the necessary information during the debugging session without uh, littering or trashing the code with unnecessary system output line stuff or something like that, which, is, which may be a very important thing to, <laughs> to do because usually uh, people tend to do it opposite way, but let's talk about it further. Then. Something more interesting. We will try to somehow make the debugging part not only static, so analyzing what is happening inside the application, but we will also try to somehow um, change its behavior and even somehow rewrite the history, as you, can, as you will be able to see later, and just to somehow change the execution path of it to perform the debugging things better. After that, 
two last things. The first one is something like Pokemon and Gata Catch Em All, so how to properly try to debug and catch the exceptions during the debugging session. And for the last part, if there will be still some time left, silence of the lambdas. I do not own the copyright to this sentence because someone has uh, introduced it during the previous Ruby conferences about 10 years ago. If, if this person is sitting here, nice to meet you. If not, that's fine, but definitely it's not mine. But I very like this, 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 this thing. It uh, always fits best to any, any stuff related to stream and even reactive programming, so definitely I liked it. So we will, talk, we will talk about how to debug the lambdas in the Java application, of course, in the more simpler part, not the reactive one, but only with the stream API. Okay, let's go. Before we go to this Mars flight plan, uh, of course, as I promised uh, pre previously, I would like to uh, present the code we will be working with, because this code, uh, uh, it's a very simple one, but will allow us to um, show all the debugging features included in the IntelliJ debugger. Okay, let's go. To, so, so let's go to the IntelliJ. Okay, it's okay. Let's also stop the presentation. Okay, as you can see here, yeah, can you see? Can you see the code? Is the resolution uh, correct, or do you need to somehow go to the, go to the presentation mode? Presentation mode, okay. The question is whether we'll be able to, okay, let me also somehow stop the sharing screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go there. Now I see everything, okay, that's fine because, okay. View, um, appearance, yeah, to presentation mode. Yeah. Now it should be better visible in my, I hope so. So it's a very simple blog application, which is, as you can see, uh, if I run it, it allows us to just to uh, uh, show and add some posts on the on the blog. Uh, I do not, uh, I didn't try to make a very sophisticated application here. It makes no sense. It's not even the web one. It's just the console one. But in my opinion, the console application should make it, should make its job here. So uh, let's try to run it and see what happens if we run this application. But and just use this this just this just application. Okay, let's run this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, this is a very simple console application. If I try to scroll it up a little bit, you can see that we have few actions available. It's just show post titles, search posts, show post content for given posts, add a new post, and even exit the application if you want to do. It's a console one, so of course let's start from the first thing. If you just try to show post titles for the old posts, you can see that this app, there is no, there is nothing because. Initially, the database, okay, if, if we can say about database here because it's just being kept in memory, the database is empty. So, of course, we need to add some post here. So let's go to the action number four, enter post title example. Content. And now we can search about it. Yeah, it's only the first one, as you can see, this is zero. If we, uh, we can also show this content of this post, so let's go on number three, enter this zero, yeah, and let's see this is example content, and this is we can also look for uh, for the post, so let's try to find which contain the X character. So if you just enter X, yeah, this is the first one. So more or less nothing sophi nothing nothing sophisticated, very simple application. But of course, as you can see. There are some things that we can try to demonstrate here, because usually if we stop that, as you can see, this application, of course, we lost use of this post. And if you run it again, okay, the posts are being lost completely. And this is the first thing we want to show using the debugger, because usually uh, when we want to debug our application, and it's always, it's not so easy because we need to prepare some sophisticated setup. For example, we need to set up the test database or to prepare some, uh, some example data, to make another connection and so on and so on. And of course, one may say, okay, 
but I want to debug just my business functionality. I want to debug, for example, whether our posts are being connected, filtered when I'm just trying to, so to when I fetch it from the database. No, what I'm only concerned now is just to filter this post correctly or find it uh, by, the by the title and so on. So it's not my job to somehow check where to get this post from the database, to set up the database and so on. No, it's the DBA job. He or she is being paid for that. I wa only want to somehow mm, check my business logic, uh, assuming that uh, all the posts are being already loaded. But in this situation, it's not so simple, because if we, want, if we s would like to if we go to the code, and let me go to that. So let's, go to, let's start from the, from the main code of the application. As you can see, this is a very simple one. We're just creating a service. We're just creating a scanner. And of course, we're creating block CLI. So we are uh, providing here a very poor spring or uh, other, other things, uh, dependency injection mechanism. And we are running the block CLI, which contains post service and so on. If you, if you go to this, this, this method, we can see that there is a very simple strategy pattern applied. It's being checked which op option has been ch 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 chosen by the user. And ac according to this option, this, uh, this option is being executed. And of course, uh, after that, we are, uh, the loop is being run, run and once again, and so on and so on, until we just uh, select the last option, the zero, which means that uh, the application should be terminated. OK. So the question is, how do we show the post titles? What's going inside here? So let's go to the post service, definitely. And this is the this show post titles action. As you can see, this action just does something like that. It's just running the post service. And of course, uh, gets all posts from this post service and just print them with the short post DTO format. That's, that's more or less more. And if we go to the post service here, you can see, yeah, it's just post stream and so on and so on. So the question is, how can we f provide these uh, applications to be working only for debug mode that some posts are being returned? Of course, one can say, OK, let's go here. Let's go to the block, CLI, uh, block application. Yeah. And OK, let's, let's do something like that. OK, post service. Add post, and this is a new post DTO. And of course, we can provide the title here and the content that it would work. Of course, it would work. But in my, this is a very improper behavior we should completely avoid of because during the debugging session, our main goal is to avoid as much as possible uh, changing the already existing code. We only want to somehow debug it. We only, we only want to somehow check how it is running, No, to add this uh, new stuff here. Why? The first thing is, thus, is just because if we add new lines of the code, we can improperly introduce an error. This is one thing. The second thing is that there is always a risk. Of course, uh, not a big one, especially in the era of uh, co code review, automatic, so automatic tools like SonarCube and so on. But still, there is a possibility that we can somehow, ex uh, for the, just for uh, um, exceptionally, left the code uh, committed. And what can be worse, it will go finally to the production. So we will just add any, uh, just accidentally add new, add new posts for all the production stuff is working here, which is completely uh, what we should uh, avoid uh, during the debugging session. So what can we do? So this thing is just what we can achieve here. Let's go to something like non-suspending breakpoints. Non this may seem a little bit ridiculous, because usually when someone looks into the breakpoints in the debugger, they, if someone adds such breakpoints, his or her purpose is definitely to break the execution of the, of the application exactly at the breakpoint. So what, does, what is the sense of using the breakpoint which does not halt the program in, uh, when it's being hit? OK. And this is exactly the, the case. We will use, get the usage of, of that. So let's go to this breakpoint. Look at it. I already, pre I already pre prepared it. And look what's happening inside there. We have this breakpoint being added. As you can see, 
it's not suspending one, so definitely in, in such condition when the breakpoint will be hit, this breakpoint will not suspend the execution of the application. So it will be just run, uh, only will be hit, the debugger will notice that the breakpoint has been, uh, has, has been reached, and nothing else will happen. So what is the reason to use uh, such things? Of course, without any other stuff like here, it makes no sense. But there is exactly one thing we can definitely make a big usage of. It's something like evaluate and lock. As you can see, this is some, some point when we, can, uh, when we can execute some action which will print something in the console. About printing in the console, I will talk about a few minutes later, but also let's focus about another thing. If we can execute this action, it can do a lot of stuff, not only printing something to the console, because usually uh, what is printed in the console is the result of being the, co the code being executed, but we can execute any arbitrary code here. So let's see what I have added here. So we have something like that. I try to add two new posts. It's a very simple situation. We are calling the add post method twice. What is only the biggest difference between just adding it as a regular Java code is the fact that uh, because we do not have new post DTO imported in this blog application class, we have to uh, give the full qualified name of this class new post DTO here. Because if, we are, if I just omit this package part, this will not compile and will be, um, will be reported by the debugger when the application will start. And I will try to show it later how, how does it look like when, I, when we somehow screw something up. But let's assume that we, add this, uh, we have added this uh, correctly. We have uh, added this to, to posts with the very um, cursing content. We will see later how does it look like. And, OK, let's go to with that. And the first thing is that, and usually uh, almost everyone forgets about that, including me. It's just if you want to use the debugger, use the debugger. So what you should do, you should run the applications not with the run button, but the, with the debug one. And if, if you forget about it, you will be just uh, tearing your uh, hairs off your head. Why, does, why for the hell nothing, nothing works? And this is usually the very common mistake I'm doing, uh, even, even with such experience. So do, do, don't do that. Uh, just uh, learn the lesson. It's, it's better to forget, for, for, if, uh, remember about it. So, now let's try to run this on the debugger. The question is also whether I have forgotten or not about <laughs> removing all the breakpoints, but we will see. So run, run, this, run this debug application and go. OK. It will take a few while, but finally it should work. And now you can see. It's not being stopped because the breakpoint has been reached, but nothing has been uh, added here. Uh, so uh, nothing has been halted. So, but now let's see what we see in the application. Let's try uh, to, and you, as you can see, we have two posts being added without changing any code in, in our application. It's only being executed by the debugger. What is more, if I stop this application and I even do, will not remove this breakpoint but I will just mute it. OK, it should be, OK, I will just try to, to just, OK, close it now here, and it should be OK. And now we watch our debug it once again. OK, and as you can see, now, now the situation is clear, nothing is being added. So as you can see, I can more or less control the behavior of the application just by switching on and off the breakpoint and nothing else. This is a very, in my opinion, a very powerful thing which can allow you to definitely prepare the, the application debugging setup in a much more, much, much more comfortable way than usual without adding any ex extra code and it's just, just by using the pure debugger thing without non-suspending breakpoint. And that's more or less all from this, this first part. But of course, 
it's, on, and it's not only the question of using these non-suspending breakpoints for just set, uh, making the application setup. There is another thing, and let's now go to the second part of the application. Let's try to somehow search for any posts. For this, for this reason, I need to run this application once again in the, under debugging mode and somehow uh, provi provide these two initial posts for that. OK, let's check whether it work. OK, there. Yeah. OK, and now let's try to use this functionality with uh, searching posts uh, with the very simple searching for the content inside the title or the, or, the, or the post content and so on. How does it look like? Let's go to the post service. Post service. And as you can see, this is exactly the place where this business logic is being executed. We are just uh, somehow uh, passing the query, which is from the console, and then f uh, just in the simple uh, streaming applications, we are filtering the posts just by checking whether uh, the title contains the query or the content contains the query. So it's not so sophisticated business logic. But of course, let's assume that something, for example, stopped working here, because we would like to know uh, whether the posts are being correctly fi filtered. And Let's, let's assume that the filtering does not work properly. For example, let's, let's check whether, for example, let's try to filter by the, uh, big, uh, the capital A. Sorry, not this one, search posts. Yeah, and nothing is being returned. Okay, it's, it's a bit, a bit too early. Okay, nothing is being returned, no, there is no post. Okay, and one can say, okay, but Hello, one, one, one minute. There, is, there are some posts containing the letter A, of course not the capital one, but they should be filtered in and out. So how can we debug these situations? Of course, there are, there are some ways. We can, for example, just make add some uh, pure breakpoint here and check on every post whether it's being filtered or not. It would work. But let's, uh, this, this, uh, this option will completely does not work for us if we, for example, have not two posts, like in my case, but for, but for example, 200. So it's not a good idea. Another thing, and now we are going to the situations when somebody is tempting to do, do, to do something, which completely shouldn't be do, but of course it's being uh, very abused, is something like that. Okay, so let's do something like that. Let's change this, this, uh, this lambda. And of course, let's add this, these braces here. Of course, of course, return. Okay, something like that. Okay, now we now, now also add this semicolon here. And of course, what can we do? Yeah, system out print line. Okay, something like that for query. So okay, let's let's at least do it in a more civilized way, but still would be not something in format. For query, yeah, and something like that. So let's do that. Of course, let's also uh, add this one here, query, and of course add this, copy this code here, and of course this would work. So let's try to now try to run this once again. Of course, we can, there's also another one, one, one very nice thing because we can, of course, not rerun the whole application, but we can, of course, we can also because this uh, this code is being uh, called in the method, which is being called from the block CA run. We can use here something like hot swap. We can only recompile this one method, and this should be somehow picked up by this. Uh, be by this application. So let's try to build it. Yeah, reload it. And if it we should try, try to run once again. And now let's go to with this search post action. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, without even without restarting the applications, I was able to reload it. Only because I only changed this one uh, one one method and uh, somehow hot swapped it with the within the executed code, and as you can see, 
okay, now I have more or less the, 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 the bug result. But of course, as you can see, okay, I forgot to add one, uh, to add one thing, because uh, I only printed the query, and I also printed the result, but of course, I didn't print the post. So I have no idea this, this debugging message makes me no real diagnostic value. So okay, so I need to somehow and post title. Content. Of course, I need to also recompile it and so on and so on, so which makes also no sense. But it's, let's somehow continue with that. At least we will try to. Okay, and also let's try slow to let's try to format it a little bit in the more readable way. So post get title and post get content. Okay. Okay. And now let's let's try to rebuild this this project. Can also recompile this only one class. It should also be it should, it should also be fine. Yeah, and we can just go once again with that. And okay, let's choose the action. Search post, give letter A. Yeah, and now at least we are able to see that yeah, this query is not working properly because for all the posts. I can say, yeah, the, this letter A is not being found here. Of course, the solution is just to, for example, uh, make this uh, both things to, to change both things, title, content, and query to uppercase, and this would, would work. We will not uh, go further with that. It's just a question for refactoring the code. But at least we can see, OK, we are able to trace what's happening in the code. But there is one thing. We had to. Uh, make two things wrong. The first thing is that we have to change the code and recompile it a few times. So we definitely lost some time for recompiling and somehow reloading the class. It is more or less neglectable, but still it's not the ideal situation. And the worst thing is that we had to add this very ugly stuff, system out print line. So we, we just d d dumped something to console. And believe me, there is a possibility that finally, if we add a lot of such stuff in the code, we will forget to remove it. Of course, in a, as a backenders, we are a little bit privileged because uh, you know we have code reviews, we have automatic tools, and so on. And, and also, in the worst case, even if something will sneak out of this code and we go to production. The worst thing what would happen, it would just be, it would just appear in the server log. So it's not a good, uh, so it's still not a proper idea. But okay, that's that's some more or less acceptable, but still not ideal one. But as a front enders, it's completely, it's it's very 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 wrong situations because front enders tend to also put something like uh, console log, and console log is unfortunately being dumped to the console of the browser, and everyone can see what has been dumped in exactly such way with very interesting things there. This is another thing. Uh, uh, this is, and in such case, we have two things. The first one is security breach, because uh, usually what we are dumping here is are some, some, certain, some very sensitive data. And the, the second thing, it's uh, more the question of the politeness, because usually, I don't know how this is abroad, but in Poland, if we are trying to debug something, we tend to, for example, add here something like, if you want to, for example, know whether the, the line has been reached, it's a system out print line, and now comes the four-letter very good known word in Polish. I wouldn't dare to, to say it <laughs> publicly, but usually it's being found. Okay, in the in the uh, especially in the better way. Okay, this, we are using this word, but something, we are adding something like that. Or oh, yeah, yeah, just to spot this in the in the log file. No, 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 don't go that way. I, I can say that because I have been using that a lot, and I can see if I, I, I did it wrong, let's just try to learn from my lesson. No, uh, forget about it. Let's just roll back everything. Let's do it more proper way. So let's focus still on the non-suspending breakpoint, something like that. OK, no, I, I deleted too, too much. So yeah. Of course, this will somehow uh, hint me something like that, expression lambda, that's fine. So now let's go to non-suspending breakpoint. We, 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 uh, because it, as you can see, it's a very versatile, uh, versatile uh, animal which can do a, a lot for us. So, oh no, 
I, I dropped it here. Okay, it's not a good idea. Okay, but we, we can. We, we also have something like that in the IntelliJ. If we accidentally delete the breakpoint, we can restore the previous version of it, which is a very convenient one for such uh, non uh, non uh, cautious guy like me. So let's go now for that. And like as you can see, this is not suspending breakpoint, and this non suspending breakpoint. I, we can, of course not suspending applications, and then we can see. Yeah, it's exactly something like string format, which is, uh, and it is exactly the same. What I have somehow um, uh, written uh, written here, and as you can see, also filtering post. I, I have I, I make it a little bit shorter because uh, the post, fortunately, has the to string method, which more or less uh, solves the problems of uh, writing all the fields for me. And this exactly, and this. This uh, value of this expression is being evaluated and is being dumped to the console. And if we now run this application, which is of course being run here, we can just try to run this once again. Even we, 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 sh we are not even uh, forced to restart it because it's just uh, the question of enabling the breakpoint. We are using the, and as you can see, okay, okay, it's not because, okay, I need to restart it once again. Yeah, because the breakpoint has been that. Yeah. 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 There we go. Ah, yeah, because I, I changed the, the code, so it needs to be recompiled, unfortunately. Okay. Search post, and then it should be printed by the log. As you can see, we have something like filtering post. Uh, we have, we, the whole post is dumped to the console with the query and the results, and now we can somehow mm, analyze the log uh, of what is happening inside the application and so on. What is more, we can not only look for that the breakpoint has been reached, but we can also add another thing. Let's also show it here. You can see there is also some uh, two additional checkboxes we can check in. The breakpoint hit will does not give us a lot because we know the breakpoint has been hit. But uh, there is something exactly very interesting here because if we have some piece of the code, which of course uh, we can say, oh, it should never happen. Yeah, and usually it happens exactly in the moment we don't want to it. So uh, we want to somehow track why to the hell the code has, uh, has reached this piece, the, this, this, exactly this line. And we want to somehow get the structures of that. So there are also another two things to achieve. The first one is to set the breakpoint and completely break the execution of the program, which makes no sense in some situations. And the second one, of course, I have used a lot previously and do, don't do that, is just to throw an exception and then immediately catch it and write and dump the stack trace of the exception. Of course, which will dump the stack trace on the console. No. Also, do not do such very ugly things. No. Let's just use this nice checkbox and then look what ha would happen. Yeah. As you can see now, we can just dump the very, uh, very sophisti sophisticated and uh, somehow extended uh, stack trace, and uh, we'll be able to know how would it would be able to reach the certain moment I in this application, the certain line. As you can see, there is the, of course, there is a lot of, as you can see, the Java internal stuff, but still we are able to check whether it counts for the search post method through the, all the Lambda stuff and so on and so on. So, concluding uh, all this stuff, I can say that we, I have shown these two interesting parts of uh, uh, non-suspending breakpoints. But now, let's go to something different. Because, uh, as you can see, currently, we focused only on the fact that we are able to somehow look what is happening inside the application. But we are analyzing it statically. So what would happen? It happened. We didn't change anything. We just analyzed that something happens in the applications and try to check what's, uh, what's the reason of that. And uh, we can somehow analyze the, the, the situations and, for example, look about the stack trace, the variables at the breakpoint, and so on and so on. But as you can, uh, maybe not all of you are uh, somehow conscious that the debugger, it's not only the static tool, it's also the, the dynamic one. So with the debugger, we can somehow mutate the state of the applications and the execution path. Of course, the, um, the features are somehow limited because we are not able to do anything. 
as you can see, but still, with these limitations, we are able to achieve a lot. So let's now forget about our good, uh, good friends like uh, these non-suspending breakpoints. I will just try to somehow drop this stack trace and drop this evaluate, but it will somehow remain here. And let's go to the another method. We will try to look for the post with given ID. As, as, as exactly as you can see, we have this method get post with the post ID, and we are just trying to just get all the posts, filter with, with the given ID, which, of course, it's not the proper value of doing it with, if it would be somehow fetched from the database. No, definitely don't do that, but let's assume that, okay, that this, this uh, amount of the post here is somehow neglectable, and we also just to find how only want to filter th that one, then map it to the DTO we want to return, and find first. And in case, uh, for example, when there is no such post, we try to just use this uh, good optional stuff and just show the exception uh, post with given ID is not found. Well, very simple situations, I think. I don't think this is a very sophisticated thing. But let's just try to run this application. And in this case, I will just try to set up a regular breakpoint without, with uh, the bra breaking one. And now let's try to go to the in inside this code. So let's... Uh, Run this once again because it has been. Oh no, it's still, it's still working. So let's go to go to this post and try to say, okay, we have two posts. So let's try to uh, to just to look at this 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 first post content. Let's enter the zero. And now we are just be we hit the breakpoint, and we we just got into the get get post method. Uh, and now let's assume that we don't want to. Stop here. We also want to go to the find first method. Okay. It is a resume program. And okay, let's see that this, uh, we are still uh, trying to find this first post. But this is another interesting thing because assume, let's assume that we just how missed very important part in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, chain of operators. Like for example, we went too, 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 too deeply into, into the, this debugger session. And, of course, the question is, what, are we able to somehow go back in the time and somehow restart this function once again? Because definitely, it's usually you, you know, this, you know this, uh, this, uh, this point during the debugging session that you just are analyzing something, a very interesting code. You are just uh, going inside and inside the uh, step into step. And then finally, if you are next to the moment when you, when you think you are able to spot the bug, you Unfortunately, you miss exactly this one call, and you and you realize, okay, it was broken one one line before. And of course, what you can do is just to try to reproduce the situations, which somehow, which sometimes maybe not so easy to do, or try to run this function once again. But how? And the question is comes from the Java. The, fortunately, it comes from the Java stack trace model because as you can see now we have the stack trace where we we are sitting in uh, on the point we, when we have uh, stopped the application execution and as you can see we are uh, nested four levels below the main application log and java allows us to to do something like that okay uh, let's assume that this last frame of the stack was uh, did not happen just forget about it drop it and just try to restart them once again from the previous frame. And if we do that, we will be able to run this function once again. So let's look at this call stack. As you can see, there are some magical options here. It's exactly, there are three we will talk about, but we will start from this one. The first one is drop frame. If we drop frame, it will exactly behave like this function was never being called, and we are just, just before calling it once again. So let's try to drop it. And now we are exactly, we just jumped one, uh, one level above to the moment just before the, the function will be called once again. So if we, are, if we want to go around this once again, 
Then we will uh, resume, resume, resume this program, and as you can see, we are once again in the, same, in the same function. So we are able to start from the scratch doing everything what we want to do in this function. The question is, is the history being completely rewinded? The, and the answer is, it depends. If we are talking about local, uh, local variables here, it's com they are being completely created from the scratch. So nothing happens. But if, unfortunately, some of the statements have changed the uh, variables out there of this frame, or even the global ones, this cannot be rewound, because, uh, because this is something like the transaction commit in the database. It, it, has been, it happens already, so uh, unfortunately, this cannot be restored. But if we are just in this function, this is not a, it's not the case, because we are not mutating anything from the global side. So, OK, we, we, can, we are able to somehow rewind it from, from the scratch and start once again. Of course, there is also another thing. It's, it's, more, it's more interesting because someone may be tempted that if we are able to somehow to uh, change this, um, uh, somehow drop this frame, so we'll be able, for example, to change the argument of this function. OK, so let's do that. As you can see, OK, it's post ID. As, 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 as we can see, post ID, fortunately, is not final one, which is very, very rare in this code because I try to make a lot of uh, variables to be uh, final ones. But as it's, as it's not the final one, we can just change its value. Why not? So we can also mutate the state of the, of the and just try to once again. And you will be very, uh, very negatively surprised, but this, the, the, the post ID is still being zero because this is exactly the magic, because we are just coming back to the moment when the frame is being to run once again, and the, all the arguments and the state of the new frame has been already pre-calculated by the Java executor, so we are not able to change anything here. So the drop, drop frame does not allow us, unfortunately, to, to do that way. To change these things here, we can only restart the, 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 the frame with the exactly same set of arguments as has been passed before. And uh, please be aware of that fact, because it, we can be a little bit misleading of that. OK. So let's go, there. Let's go further. Let's, let's forget about this, uh, this breakpoint. Let's go to another thing. Uh, OK. OK, it's of console, console we just OK, I found this post once again. So let's try to find it once more and more. And now let's try to do something like that. I can always decide that, for example, I want, don't want to return uh, the stuff from the function that will be calculated from the business logic, but I would like to simulate what would happen if I, for example, would drop out of this function with the very special value, the new one completely disregarding what has been calculated here. And this is the, the next step we can do with somehow changing the history of this, uh, of the, of, of the, uh, altering the execution path. So let's change, let's do something like that. We can another option. It's something like force return. We can say, OK, let's return something like Something like, for example, ah, which of course will not work because you can see we expect something like post content DTO, not the string, but let's try to somehow, uh, uh, to, 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 to somehow deceive the debugger. Of course, it will, it will not allow us to do some stuff. So definitely, it's exactly saying, I need the post content DTO here. Don't try to cheat me. OK, if so. So I, I only have to, I need to somehow run this. Uh, fortunately, post content DTO is imported in this class, so I don't need to write the full qualified name. And for this post content DTO, I can say something like, example, hello. Yeah. Yeah, new post content DTO. I don't, OK, yeah, it's new. I don't even know whether the semicolon is needed here, but let's, let's add it for this sake and run. OK, ah, new post content DTO. Doo -doo. Ah, ah, yeah, because post content DTO contains only the content, not the two fields. Yeah, that's fine. Now it's fine. It should be, it should be OK. Yeah. Yeah, as you can see, we have returned that. 
And what is more, if we are executing this, this, this further, as you can see, and this, at, this, at the console, we will exactly see the pre-prepared, the artificial post-content DTO I have presented in the, for the debugger. So I'm able to somehow alter the execution path of the program and change the thing I wanted to know. OK, I see that the time is slightly running up, so let's also show the, uh, the last thing, OK? Uh, just to somehow also alter the execution path. So let's go here to, to the debugger. Well, let's, let's, let's also look for, search for the post once again. OK. As you can see, now I'm somehow in the variable. OK, OK, it's somehow, yeah, unfortunately, because it has been detached from the main debugger, I will try to, OK, restore different, oh, OK, now it's fine. And as you can see, I, now I would like to be a troll and do not do return anything, but just try to convince the, someone who is calling the method that the post is not being, uh, the, the post is, post is not uh, existing. So let's try to select the third thing, the throw exception. And now I need to return the exception I want to throw from the method. And OK, something like that. And of course, let's do that. OK, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm, it's, it's being returned, and then I will just oh. Yeah, as you can see, this exception has been thrown from the, from the application, so I also was able to alter the execution path and even complete this function abnormally. And when we are talking about the exception, there is also one thing I would like to know, because fortunately, as you can see, these exceptions are being co correctly handled, more or less. But usually, there is also another thing. Someone may be tempted to do something like that. Yeah, because, yeah, exceptions are only to somehow make our lives harder, so definitely the best way is just to try to swallow it and forget it about completely. And if we do something like that, of course, it would work completely. It would, would. It won't work completely. We will try to somehow find the post with non-existing ID, and of course, okay, it would take a lot. Okay, search for post content, return the ID equal to 100. Okay, this is okay. I, I I need to switch off these breakpoints because they are. Okay, 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 and of course, ah, I also need to switch off this this endpoint and no all, and of course. On the console, we have, ah, because it was back when reach, but uh, so let, let's do once again. OK, I, I, should, I should have muted it previously. OK. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, OK, yeah, because I also have this. Uh, I, have, I have too much breakpoints, honestly speaking, so I need to mute it completely and also an exception, and then and once again, and now now we should we should work. Uh, two minutes left still. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, and enough. Now everything is muted. We do not see anything because the exception has been just being swallowed. And for such situations, because it's, it can only not, not be our fault, but also there is a lot of uh, libraries that uh, internally use the exceptions to communicate between different layers and then swallow it finally without showing to the user, and then we are just headbanging why something is not being happened, it's very nice sometimes to just try to code such, uh, such exceptions uh, in the applications. And for this case, we can just something like, uh, add something like exception breakpoints. And for, the, for such exceptions, we, of course, will try to use post exception, which will be thrown. OK. And also, this should be a, because I do, ah, uh, because this is a, unfortunately, in this presentation mode, I, I see that the, mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because there is, ah, uh, uh, OK. Yeah, it's not being, uh, I cannot show here because there are also some check boxes and that on the bottom there are, is, is, is waiting for the checked and unchecked exception and so by default both of them are being checked in. So for that fact, let's assume that it's working and now if we are trying to use it once again, yeah. And now you can see 
there is a breakpoint when the exception is being thrown. And as you can see, now finally we are able to see, okay, there is an exception thrown in the application, and exactly we are swallowing it finally, but at least we would be able to, to see that there is an ex uh, there is the, the supply, the exception is being created and, and run. Okay. And I think we, we somehow went to the end of our time, so it's uh, always still 40 seconds left. So thank you very much for the attention. I hope that you have learned some, uh, something a lot and will be able to <laughs> deliver. And now, after. thank you, thank you. I know there is a break already, but if someone wants to ask some questions, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm here until the next lecturer will come up, so don't, don't hesitate to do that. Thank you.